Welcome to Behind the Backline, the podcast where we chat with merchants, brands, and industry professionals in the musical instrument, pro audio, and event technology space about their products, services, industry trends, stories, and more. Join us now as we dig into the stories behind our favorite backline gear. Welcome to episode 20 of Behind the Backline. I am Matt Jacoby of Octave Media, and today I am talking with Max Fergus of Live Undiscovered Music, also known as Loom. Thank you for joining me today, Max. Thank you so much, Matt. I'm really uh, excited to be on and have the chance to talk with you. Yeah, and it's really cool. I mean, I, I've had actually a couple guests right here from my own backyard. You guys are right here in Madison with me. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, let's uh, start off by having you uh, kind of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what Loom, uh, Loom does. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you so much again um, for having us on. Uh, yeah, so my name is Max. Obviously, um, you know, I just graduated from the University of Wisconsin Madison. Um, you know, my family and also the Loom team is very Madison central. Um, it's one of the p big pieces of our story that I would say that um, is really important to us. Um, most of us are Madison graduates or still in school, um, but I can give you a little bit of background, uh, kind of on where we came from, um, and then the company itself. So. I started a think tank actually with a lot of, you know, University of Wisconsin students and alumni back in the fall of 2017 when we were all seniors. Um, you know, we were looking at industries that were growing really rapidly but had antiquated business models. Uh, we were actually really surprised to see that streaming and music streaming specifically um, fit that criterion, the, the, you know, the best. Uh, you know, we were a bunch of engineers and finance students and comp sci kids and not a lot of us were really um, knowledgeable on music. So, so we kind of took a very objective view at it. And we, we started to realize that a lot of the financial problems in the industry with companies like Spotify or Pandora or SoundCloud were really related towards the frustrations of a lot of the users on the platform, like uh, of the emerging artists and the up and coming bands. Um, you know, 99% of all the music that is streamed is only of the top 10% of all the streamed corporate and mainstream music meaning that most emerging artists uh, actually have no ability to either make money on any of these platforms or promote uh, themselves or advocate for themselves. Uh, so we started kind of taking an objective look at that and trying to figure out, well, what are some of the ways that we can not only fix the financial problems of the industry, but also fix the problem for music promotion for artists and music um, discovery for the next generation of fans. And from there, Loom was born, I guess. Uh, we incorporated in February and we're a music streaming and discovery application, but we're actually built on a social network. We don't house any corporate or mainstream music and we only focus on circulating as much emerging music as possible. And instead of AI or predictive technology like Spotify or Pandora that highlights corporate and mainstream music, um, we focus on the ability to share and rank and engage with music with your peers and your communities. Um, so that we give people the chance to find all that really great undiscovered music that exists all around them. Um, and since, you know, from there, we've really come a long way and we're excited to um, finally be launching our platform um, August 17th at the Monona Terrace as part of the 2018 Forward Technology Festival. That's awesome. And yeah, if you guys just started in the fall of 2017, that's not a very long time to be in development. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. We, you know, we, we, we're really surprised to see everything, you know, come together. I was supposed to go out, um, like we were talking about before, before we hopped on, you know, supposed to go out and help start a healthcare investment banking division for Rothschild in New York. Um, and that quickly turned into me foregoing that offer to help start Loom. Um, you know, we incorporated in February. Um, we raised a significant amount of capital very early on. Um, we ended up getting some of um, the best music influencers, you know, in the world to be on our team, including Randall Mays, who ran Clear Channel Communications for 20 years, which was, you know, iHeartRadio, um, some of the best music lawyers in the world. And, you know, Gary Greenstein from WSGR, who represents, you know, Spotify and Pandora and YouTube and Bandcamp. Um, and we were really surprised to see the amount of people that believed in our vision, believed in the business model of what we were trying to create. Um, and because of that, you know, we gained a lot of traction and um, hype around what we were doing and we really it allowed us to really create a really exciting product um, in not a very long period of time which was you know something that we were really excited about that's awesome now i, I hate to play devil's advocate for a minute you know go so ahead I, absolutely everyone ha hates to have an, any kind of negativity around a, a new hmm. product <laughs> but have you you know you guys are in college and everything and um 
have you guys in the whole process have any of you ever like experienced someone bringing up like any relationship or similarities to um what used to be myspace to this concept yeah of course i mean you hear people all the time you know whether it's myspace or even you know soundcloud or pandora or what you know anything like that um and the truth is that we truly believe that the music industry is ready for this disruption. And, and to get back to even your point more specifically, so we're not wasting any time, you know, the one thing about MySpace is what exists now that could facilitate this that didn't exist back when MySpace really started. Um, and you can pull it out of your pocket right now. It's a smartphone. Um, the ability to truly create meaningful, meaningful mobile connections um, is growing so fast and so rapidly and the technology behind those mobile connections and the social network applications um, is something that's truly exciting and truly engaging um, and it didn't have the potential back then because we didn't have the technology or the ability to do some of those things that we do now with mobile phones um, with streaming technology um, and and now we do have a lot of those things. And not only do we have a lot of those things, but we also have an industry that is kind of ripe um, for that disruption. And we have a generation of people that were born into social media. If you look at Generation Z and younger millennials, we also have the generation of people that are excited to experience something new like Bloom, um, like social meeting streaming in a way that doesn't exist right now and really didn't exist with um you know, MySpace itself. I'd agree with you. Yeah, I think MySpace, while it didn't start out as a music platform, it was definitely, you know, ahead of its time. Well, you know, because it seems like the first one kind of always fails and then mm -hmm. Facebook picked up the slack in that instance. But when it tried to reintroduce it, in, in, reinvent itself, excuse me, um, you know, even though we know it's a music platform now, it's still mainstream media probably more yeah and it's something that's completely out of our minds now because it's of its past reputation of mm -hmm. being boring and like a version one <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and there is something to be said for that you know like um people always kind of said you know like oh twitter you can't become twitter because facebook already exists and all these other things that become exist well you know the people that founded twitter were almost ignorant to some of those comments right they they're like, we can do this because we truly believe that there's a need in the market for it and that people will, you know, adopt what we're creating. You know, a, a company like Loom can only be successful if the community that we are trying to create really adopts the vision and adopts that community feel. Um, and some of the testimonials that we've gotten from some of our brand ambassadors and some of our Loom leaders um, are, are absolutely astonishing. I think people are looking for a community to really engage and to be supportive. Um, and that's really what we're trying to stand for as much as possible. Awesome. So are there any features that uh, Loom has that, you know, are unique that, that, you know, might not resemble a past platform or current platform or might be specific to music needs? Yeah. I mean, I think the ability to just, the, it, one of the things that's really tough to do is integrate a streaming platform that has all of the functionality of streaming into a platform that is very social, like an Instagram or like a Facebook, but more specifically, even Instagram. And I think the ability to create that in a very cohesive way um, is a very big challenge and a challenge that we took on um, very head on. You know, we, we always talk about, we want artists, emerging artists to be able to use their fans and their communities as a catalyst for their growth. Because we want to use streaming as a means to an end to allow emerging up and coming artists to gain leverage by growing their fan base so that they can get involved into things like live entertainment or actually potentially have the leverage to get signed by an artist management company or a record label. And so we have created very specific algorithms, very specific feeds and explore pages that really target users in the local areas of where the artists are actually living so that they can create the most effective and saturated um, fan bases in the places that matter to them most. Um, and that is very um, unique and something that doesn't, it isn't a focus on not, not only streaming platforms, but on any really platform, not only on the fan aspect, but really on the local and community aspect. Um, and of course, there's some other features that, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of keeping 
um, quiet right now that we're really excited to be able to tell people about in a month or so. And, and, and we have some really exciting plans that we're going to share with everybody. Awesome. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. And August can't come soon enough for anybody, but, but it can come, no. it can come soon enough for you guys. Cause you're trying to finish this in a very <laughs> short amount of time. Right? <laughs> yeah. We could, we could use some time for sure. We always say that, you know, yeah. we have a month until launch and we have about two months worth of work to do, but uh, like we again talked about before we hopped on here, like if it wasn't that way, then we wouldn't be doing something right. Exactly. So who uh, right now is your uh, kind of your target audience? Is it just bands and fans only? Or do you plan on having like a expanded reach for to other groups of people? Yeah. So, you know, the, the long term vision of Loom is that we can create a digital talent pool of emerging music for live entertainment around the world. Right. We are now focusing on getting undiscovered artists fans and leverage in their local areas so that they can now, we can use Loom as a talent pool for A&R um, companies, you know, record labels, artist management companies, venues and live entertainment. Um, and because of that, we want to bridge the gap between streaming socially and then also, you know, live entertainment and some of these other um, consumers in the music space that are interested in some of that data and some of that ability that we're going to have to be able to kind of bridge the gap. Um, and shine a light on some of the really talented music that's out there, um, which means that there is a lot of intended users for the application. And it's not just music lovers or fans um, or even undiscovered or up and coming artists. It is um, venues. It is, you know, even music festivals. It's A&R companies. It's record labels. It's any anybody that has an interest um, in seeing or being advocates for emerging music growth and using it even to their own benefit. Those are all potential users for, you know, for our platform. And we make sure that we, uh, we highlight that. That's awesome. Yeah. That'll definitely cover the gamut. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, you know, I know that you're, it sounds like you're mainly doing the early submission right now for bands. How has the response been to that? Uh, it has been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we, Loom is, you know, it, it, it's a digital American idol, right? It, it, it's an underground fans and artists control the direction of music right now on Spotify or these other, you know, streaming alternatives, record labels and corporations control the direction of music, right? We don't give anybody the ability to advocate for themselves. So now we're creating a platform where fans and artists control the direction of music and the response around that has been phenomenal. We have spent almost no money on really marketing or advertising yet we have signed up, you know, over 3,000 people just to test our beta application, over 1,000 artists just to download their music, create their profiles ahead of launch. Um, and that's all been just organic excitement. And, and that's been really exciting to see. Um, we actually announced, uh, we're actually going to launch our beta application for about a month um, in about two weeks here. Um, and we'll probably run that up until August 17th when we get the platform um, to go live. Cool. And is this iOS only right now or do you plan on expanding? Um, right now it's iOS only. Um, we wanted to really make sure that we were creating the best possible platform we could. Um, and we looked at some of the analytics, you know, just like we talked about with MySpace earlier, um, not only from an artist and fan perspective, but people don't care as much about seeing this stuff on, you know, a web based platform, you know, as much as maybe they would have used to because of the, um, you know, the, the technological advances. Um, but of course, we are going to expand to web, we're going to expand to Android. Um, and that'll happen a lot sooner than I think people realize. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. I mean, while iOS is a pretty big uh, group of people, I think um, there's always people who feel left out. Like, oh yeah, I don't use I don't use iOS. I use Android, or I mm -hmm. use uh, it's still on a BlackBerry. Let's not go there. Well, but the good thing, I mean, the, the thing that people have to realize <laughs> as well is, yeah, maybe from a fan perspective, you know, you might have to wait to join you know the platform. But from an artist perspective, there there's no reason that you can't have um, one of your friends or somebody that has an iOS create your platform, and then all of the managing your music, all of that is online. We have a web portal for artists, for them to be able to log in through our website, download their music, manage their music, and still be able to create profiles. You just have to have somebody else you know, that has an iOS device be able to actually um, have that profile live on their phone. So, I mean, there, there, there's ways to get around that early on, and obviously, eventually, like we said, we'll, we'll, we'll expand as, you know, as soon as we can. Gotcha. And you said you're not doing fans or you are doing fans right now? Um, we're, we're, we're doing fans. What we'll we're accepting probably, fans? Yeah, no, we're accepting fans for early access. Okay. Um, and we'll, uh, like I said, we'll do artists. I mean, 
fans will have the ability to download the application probably about two weeks or so before we go live to be able to really be the first people to start to create connections, to use the platform, to beta test it, to help us obviously optimize and test the application. Um, and then obviously that'll expand to everybody, uh, mid August. Great. So is, um, most of those 3000 people just Madison or how is the spread across the country? It has been uh, pretty phenomenal. We have gotten not only fans on the early access across the country, but we started a program called the Loom Leader application. It's for um, you know students in college and high school that want to um, be advocates for emerging music growth, get involved in music, and help us spread the vision and community in the Loom platform. And we had, have had people as well with that platform from California and Florida and even you know internationally, and and, and that that has went pretty. Um, pretty uh, broad across the board. Our focus um, immediately once we launch the platform, we'll really be able to focus on, uh, you know, the Midwest demographics. We believe there's a lot of really talented musicians and a lot of very lean in music lovers that are really going to enjoy the application. So the Midwest is definitely a priority for us, but we, you know, we're, we're launching it nationally for a reason. It's because we truly believe that people will want to begin to enjoy it right away. Yes, definitely. So have you had any, um, uh, you know, indication that there's other, like, you know, your Spotify's and your Pandora's, um, anybody aware of your existence yet? Or has there been any, uh, uh, like a leaks or cross contaminations that like this is coming or, <laughs> um, I, I think that there's definitely, uh, some companies that are keeping, um, an eye on us. Uh, like I said, you know, our, our, our lead business advisor is, you know, was the CEO for live nation for a while. He ran iHeartRadio for 20 years. Um, you know, we're, like I said, we're actually releasing our national press release next Monday, July 16th. Um, and so there's definitely been, um, you know, we've gotten a lot of people, uh, you know, in contact with us, but the, the industry is so hot right now as well. And that's something that we have to keep in mind. You know, Amazon is creating a platform, you, um, you know, YouTube is creating a music platform, right? Facebook's trying to do some things. Um, with corporate and mainstream music, Spotify, Pandora. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that are trying to enter the industry, but they're all trying to compete basically with Spotify, right? It's it's the t- trying to get the largest catalog of 1% mainstream corporate music, but it turns out there's this long tail of talented emerging music and also a total next generation of music lovers that's coming up. And we're really focusing on those areas. Um, and, you know, we really believe that eventually a platform like Loom could be used as a graduation platform once you gain your get your fan base to be able to you know join a you know a, a larger platform like Spotify and be successful on it, um, where you're going to have a chance to really make uh, a livable income not just off live entertainment or record labels or things like that, but also potentially through streaming. Um, but the truth is, right now it's just it, it, the barrier to entry is just so high. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, if if all these big players are trying to enter the market, they're all still going to be caring about the one percent. Exactly. And that's, that's so just- yeah, assuming that there's no other another like streaming platform right now that's going to care as much about the everyone else, which is a huge, a much bigger barrel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that opens up a huge a gap in that, that market for you guys. Oh yeah. We're excited about it for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I, I've been on your website. I know there's like, I feel like a hundred of you that co-founded, <laughs> uh, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, you know, kind of the team, you know, I've met them in person a little bit, but um, I've, you know, what's everybody's backgrounds or you know, yeah. kind of a little bit about even who, who went to, who was going to school for what you had mentioned some of the, the degrees that you, you, you all had backgrounds in. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, like you said, we have, um, you know, we started this think tank, you know, not only agnostic to the industries that we were looking at, but also with anybody that really wanted to be involved in it. Um, you know, we have, um, like I said, we have a lot of great mentors and advisors and legal counsel, but we also have a truly great operational team. Um, and we, while we have a little bit probably more than we can mention here, um, we definitely, you know, we also have interns and things like that. But we have a couple people that, you know, are obviously really responsible for specific things. And, you know, um, Derek Zanger, who you might have met at the Madison Air Music Awards, um, you know, he's going to school for civil engineering. He works um, for the Department of Transportation part time and then works full time on Loom. Um, you know, Will Plock just graduated from UW um, with, uh, you know, degrees in, you know, computer science. He works for the Wisconsin Economic Development Center part time and then obviously works full time um, for Loom. We have a very vast, large array of backgrounds. Um, you know, myself graduated in investment banking. One of our other co-founders, you know, Elijah Eisenberger, um, 
uh, you know, graduated in investment banking and now actually went uh, and is working full time for um, Baird in Milwaukee. Um, and, you know, we have, we have a, a large array of backgrounds from people, you know, our, our lead graphic designer, um, Luke Coleman graduated from the University of Kansas. Um, you know, we have, there, there's a lot of different people with a lot of different skill sets and we've had a lot of dominoes fall in the right way for us. And, and, and you need some early planetary alignment for as a startup. Um, and one of the things on that is the team. And we've been very lucky to have a team that has a, a very diverse, uh, you know, skill set. Especially since, if, you know, none of you started out technically in music. And like I said before, mm -hmm. starting in the fall of 2017, what have you guys been doing for this very short period of time that moves so quickly? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and a part of that is because of the team, right? We have yeah. advisors that are working for us and, you know, we work with Foley and Lardner and Madison and they've been really great helping us get incorporated and, you know, getting our financial structure down. And we work with Wilson Sonsini, Goodrich and Rosati, WSGR, and they've been helping us with terms and policies and more of the legal aspect, right? We, um, we work with development. We, and, and then from there, it's, we obviously are planning our launch party. We're planning an exciting, you know, college tour around the Midwest. Uh, you know, we're raising money. We're constantly um, preparing for financing for, you know, the next 12 to 18 months. And we've been lucky to, you know, raise a significant amount of capital so far. And we're going to continue to um, make sure we're putting ourselves in a position for success. But I mean, we could spend, you know, three hours talking about everything we've done over the past, you know, since fall of 2017. And the truth is we're working exceptionally hard. You know, a lot of our team made large sacrifices um, to be doing Loom, whether it's delaying school or foregoing full-time jobs. Um, and, and if we're going to be making those sacrifices, we wanted to absolutely make sure that we were putting Loom um, in a position for success. And, and we're excited to say that we think we've done that so far. I would have to agree with you. It sounds like you guys have gotten all of your I's dotted and T's crossed pretty well, I think. <laughs> and it's a, it's a constant growing process. I mean, yeah. we're going to make sure that we're continuing to take those right steps and making sure that we're not only as professional as possible, um, but making sure that we are, you know, being, you know, as nice as we possibly can. We want, we, we want to be known as a group of people that really just cares about the music industry. You know, we're not selling out to anybody. We are truly just for, you know, fans, music lovers, and, and the entire music community to create a platform that anybody, everybody can truly enjoy. Um, and, and, you know, in the music industry specifically, I think that th there's a reputation around that there's a lot of clout um, and people that are, you know, in it for themselves. And um, I think that we've already kind of seen a, a little bit of, of some aspects of that with people that, you know, ev everybody's um, competitive, you know, mm -hmm. not only from a company perspective, but also from an artist perspective and, and all of that. And, we just want to make sure that we're, we're tailoring our platform to, to benefit as many people as possible. And I think that that's um, something that we just need to make sure that we continue to do into the future. Yeah. And it sounds like you guys have, you know, a, a great roadmap. You, you staying humble about it. And that is uh, ironically rare in the music industry. I mean, there's, there's, there's still a lot of people, great people out there, like you said, but yeah, it can be, it can be cutthroat a lot or mm -hmm. it can be, you know, there's this new and up and coming generation of people who are trying to rehumanize it. And that's, yeah. that's a good thing. So, yeah. And we have, we have, you know, we have no bad intentions towards anybody. We just want to help as many people as possible connect with not only um, the great undiscovered artists and emerging artists that are out there, but also with their peers and communities to really enjoy and share and engage in music together. Um, and that's something that we're really excited about is the community aspect that we're. And I think a lot of people will definitely appreciate that mm -hmm. in whichever way they're, if they're interacting with as a fan or as a band, I think this, For is, sure. this will be great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, one last plug, uh, on your launch party dates, mm -hmm. locations. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we're really excited about our launch party. We have put so much time into it. Um, you know, our, we, we launched August 17th. Um, and while we want, we launched the platform nationally, we're hosting, hosting our official launch event, uh, at the Monona Terrace. Um, you know, we have a Facebook page out there around, we have an event, right? Uh, please, you know, go sign up RSVP. Um, not only is there going to be a very interactive techie experience, you know, we want it to feel almost like a tech conference where people can engage with the application. Here's some speeches from our founders. Um, not only is it going to be that since we're centered around the 2018 Forward Technology Festival, which is an exciting entrepreneurial festival in the Midwest that comes to Madison, um, but we also are going to be hosting some of the best emerging artists 
um, both in the Midwest and Madison. And we're really excited to be doing that. You know, these are artists that we truly believe are going to take the next steps to stardom. Um, and, and this is the, you know, one of the chances we're going to have to be able to highlight them. And, and we'll be announcing some of those names here uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. Awesome. Can't wait to hear them. Um, so, uh, what's, uh, let's, um, share some of your social properties, your website, um, let people mm-hmm. know where you can find out more about the platform. Yeah, we, um, you know, we, we're really, we, we try to engage with the community as much as we possibly can. Um, we just revamped our website. There's a lot of cool stuff to kind of go on and see, you know, live undiscovered music.com. Um, we are very active on Instagram, um, at live undiscovered music. Uh, we really like to highlight, you know, on our story, specific brand ambassadors, testimonials about what people are excited about for Loom, as well as, you know, screen releases and engaging stuff there. And we're also on Facebook at Live Undiscovered Music um, and, and, and Twitter as well. But, uh, you know, we, we, we like to engage. And, and I think the other cool thing, too, is, um, like I said, we just started a, a revamped brand ambassador program for artists. Um, any, any artist can apply to be a brand ambassador for our program. And, you know, we're obviously selective because we're, you know, excited about the application. Um, but we also did a loom leader program for any students in high school or college that are really, you know, maybe want to get involved in the music business or want to be advocates for emerging music growth and connect with their peers and communities. And we really implore everybody that's interested to, you know, go sign up on our website and, 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 you know, join the team. We're excited to get as many people in involved in this as we possibly can. If you're listening right now, yes, go join the team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The more Thank help, you. the better. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And we appreciate all the help. Like I said, we're creating a community that can only be successful if people really, um, you know, get behind the vision and, and are excited to be part of to do this with us. Awesome. Well, yeah, this has been great. I, I'm glad I got a chance to really pick your brain on this. Um, I don't think we've actually crossed paths yet in person. <laughs> I, I have with your team. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Matt. Like I said, we really appreciate the chance to come on here and talk with you and, um, we hope to see everybody, you know, at the launch party and, and, you know, getting excited about this with us. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thanks again for coming on and we'll uh, cross paths soon. I'm sure. Okay. See you soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you for listening to behind the backline brought to you by active media an inbound marketing agency focused on helping music merchants develop an automated solution to increase website sales. You can find active media at www.active.media. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes or Google Play Music to learn more about great products and companies in the musical instrument, pro audio, and event technology space. And be sure to leave a review to let us know what you thought of this episode. We encourage you to share us with your friends and colleagues via social media, and we'll see you next time. Take care.